This approach will go very sideways on me for multiple reasons. I'm forced to fly at fast per ATC instructions, and the primitive autopilot on my Citation could not make most of these sharp turns at those higher speeds. Therefore, I'm forced to use many tricks to help it find the way. Also, this is a very technical approach. It's not like the terrain-heavy approach into Aspen that everybody makes a big deal about. For the RNAV 3.4 into Renton, the devil is in the details. Let's look at it quickly and see why. First of all, it's got a turn at the final approach fix. That's not uncommon, and by itself, it's not a big deal, actually. Then we see that the glide path is 3.75 degrees compared to the standard 3. In a jet, that's a big difference because jets have a problem shedding energy quickly. Next thing is the final approach segment. If we add up the distances, it's only 3.9 nautical miles. That's much shorter than most. And at 120 knot final approach speed, it doesn't give the old analog autopilot much time to get stabilized, especially after that last turn at Fesla. Next, let's look at Zulod to Fesla. It's 5.4 nautical miles, and we could potentially be at Zulod at 4,000 feet and Fesla at 1,600 feet. That's 2,400 feet to descend over 5.4 nautical miles. And the simple 3 to 1 rule will tell us that it's steep, more steep than 3 degrees. So no chance to shed energy there in any efficient way. None of those tiny details are big problems by themselves, but added together, it's something to keep an eye on. Again, I'll be forced to fly it at 170 knots and the old analog autopilot will not cooperate. 3,000 armed around heading by usual ATC kept us high and fast speed brakes on to get us below 202 so I can introduce flaps approach I know from experience the autopilot will not do well in these tight turns coming up at 170 knots. Maybe at 130 knots it could do okay, but 170 is too fast. It will oscillate laterally and never find its way. This is a common issue on the Citation 501 analog autopilot combined with the more modern Garmin 530 WAS. A friend once said, I think the root of the problem is trying to get an iPhone 11 avionics talking to a Commodore 64 autopilot. Join the final approach course, as you guys already know, means follow the lateral path of the approach, but we must maintain our last cleared altitude. Therefore, nav mode will be turned on soon. Approach mode would be an error. We are now at 3,100 feet, and the autopilot is in cap mode, and in the process of leveling off at 3,000. I must first deselect cap mode before I change the altitude pre-select to 2,500. If I don't, the autopilot will pitch down to 20 degrees to find 2,500. It's quite scary. As far as I know, all Citation 501s have this faulty and nasty behavior. 2,500, If you haven't realized already, I'm not letting nav mode deal with this turn. At 170 knots, it will fail. I'm babysitting it with heading mode, getting it very close to the final approach course. Then I will activate nav mode. This is my remote control knob for the heading bug. Now 
Now that we are actually cleared for the approach, my next goal is to activate approach mode. Approach mode will also fly me down the virtual calculated glide path as it's an LNAV plus V. But for now, I'm still babysitting the autopilot in heading mode. Cleared on M34 and Torrenton 7020. I just turned on nav mode. I feel like the autopilot will be able to find the way at this point. Number 2000, Actually, I've just decided since I'm cleared for the approach, I confirmed my uh, Garmin 530. It says LNAV plus V, so I might as well just go ahead and go into approach mode. Oh no, autopilot, what are you doing? I know what you're doing. You feel like we are too left of course, but this right turn is much too aggressive. Okay, we can go down to 16. I just said, okay, we can go down to 16, but I won't make any action yet. I'm busy and have some priorities. My autopilot is turning too hard to the right. I need to sort this out first. If I do too many things at once, like going to vertical speed mode down to 1600, I may forget to arm the altitude hold and potentially blow through this altitude. Again, my biggest concern now is the autopilot potentially taking me off course. I don't want to be too low if I'm not on course. I'm adding power. I fell below 170 knots. It's almost like I subconsciously slowed down on purpose because it's the source of this mess I'm in. I've also just been told to contact tower, another task to accomplish. Contact tower, 7020, call grader. Back to heading mode to get the autopilot back on track. The old me would have just disconnected the autopilot and hand flown the rest of the approach. Going to heading mode, canceled the approach mode. The approach mode is gone and I'm still level at 2500. This is me looking for traffic. It's a beautiful VFR day. Even though I'm so busy, looking for traffic cannot be overlooked. Pun intended. Tower 70, Charlie Golf, Iron Ave 3. Charlie Golf, Red Tower, runway 3 4, clear to land. And traffic landing ahead of you at Cessna, about 4 miles ahead on final. Traffic four miles ahead of me, probably a small Cessna doing 70 knots. I'm still under the 170 knot speed restriction. I may eat them for breakfast soon. I need to be careful. Okay, clear to three, four, seven, zero, three, what you'll see me doing next happens extremely fast. I feel like I got things back on track on heading mode and it's now time to turn approach mode back on. I turn it on and instantly notice I'm slightly above the suggested glide path. And I know what this means exactly. It means the autopilot will not descend. It must capture from below or it will not capture. So I immediately turn off the autopilot. I give up with the autopilot. Back to hand flying. Fooling around in pitch mode or vertical speed mode just doesn't seem like the best idea right now. Okay, Alpha and Alpha Landing. Focus, Papa, and Tower, catch arrival. Catch arrival, 
Yeah. Yeah. Final check, three green, no red. Last land indicating we're clear to land. I have a shot behind him about a mile and a half 